I think scientists are cool. They're like detectives. They ask questions and they solve mysteries. This is Caitlin Taylor and Mason Wonka. They sent in a question to the Kids Science Challenge, which was a real-life mystery. Who's been dumping sand on the coral reefs near where Caitlin and Mason live in Florida? Well, we don't know the answer to that question yet. It's still a mystery. But we asked our scientist friends at Syracuse University to help us out. And they showed Caitlin and Mason how they're solving their own science mystery. Who's been dumping salt into a local river? We'll be looking at salt contamination to this Nine Mile Creek. Uh, and the salt contamination, although it doesn't smother animals, it, it could, if it gets high enough, you know, affect the, the food chain from the bottom up. And so uh, salt at high concentrations uh, is, is considered a toxin to, to some biological systems. 70. 70. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, so clearly it seems that some kind of salt has gotten into this creek, probably road salt that people laid down. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot, uh, it's not harmful, but um, it, it, there clearly is some. Um, we're here downstream, the same stream, uh, in between where we were before and here, uh, there are waste beds from a comp chemical company. And we think those waste beds might be leaching out some chloride, uh, another kind of salt. So we'll be sampling this water and see if we can tell the difference between upstream and downstream. It's 300. 300. So is that bigger than 70? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so obviously now you know there's a lot more chloride being added to this creek from the waste beds that the creek passed through. Yes. All right, so the next step when we go to the university will be to go to a lab and measure the sodium because salt is sodium chloride. The beauty of this instrument is actually counting atoms. One, two, three, four, and then the signal is multiplied by a thousand or ten thousand. So that's why this instrument is a very nice toy. See, when you get to my level, you get fancy toys. Okay, that's the beauty of science. Your toys keep getting better and better. Ten thousand. One, two, what's thousand. Ten thousand. What position? So the next thing we have to just do is tell the computer to run it. The analysis is not like CSI. It doesn't take one second. You have to calibrate it. It took about one hour to calibrate it this morning. Now we're going to let it run. It's going to take about, about 20 to 30 minutes. All right, so we're going to plot the data here. The factories were located uh, on the side of the lake and they dumped all the waste material to form these large waste beds. We forensically, by using this, have been able to identify that the salt that's here and here is two different kinds of salt. So the factory is like next to the lake? Next to the they lake. they took it, the, the waste and dumped it and they, over they here? They dumped it over there, okay. that's right. So that's where it's coming from? And so that, that, right. So it's leaking out chloride, but it's not sodium chloride, which is salt. Road, you know, like road salt. Do they know this? Yes, they know that, and they're trying to clean it up. Okay. Yeah. I think that most of the time when you're doing a detective project, you always have to use science because, like, the, a lot of times if you use fingerprinting in the water environment, you also have to find out where something came from, like the sediment or the salt. As you would try to find out who the fingerprint came from, we're trying to find out where the salt came from. Check out Caitlin and Mason's blog on our KSC in Action page.